Hey, thanks for joining us. We're going to do a review today on Reray Outdoors. Now you might be thinking, Reray Outdoors, doesn't that sound like it would just have like hiking videos and cool outdoor scenery and maybe some interesting music? Uh, well, you'd be right. That's really what this channel is about. But I also like doing reviews from time to time. I'm kind of a gadget geek and I buy a lot of stuff. And uh, so I like to share my comments and hope that maybe if you're in a market for something like what, I'm, what I was in the market for, you might find my comments helpful in making your purchase decision. So um, that's why I do it. Um, about a month ago, I did a review on this DoxyQ wireless portable scanner. Um, and I'll put the link to that in the comments below, along with a, a link to where you can buy it if you're interested um, at, at Amazon. You can also check out some additional specs on it and look at the reviews on Amazon, along with this DoxyGo SE. This is the new version of the DoxyGo, and apparently the folks at Doxy have made some improvements to the way that sheet feeding uh, is handled. Now, this has an automatic document feeder built in and a manual feeder. I had a few issues with the automatic feeder, uh, but the manual feeder worked more or less okay, as far as I could tell. Um, generally, didn't have any complaints about this scanner. If you go look at the video, you'll see um, just that I had some issues with the automatic document feeder. Now, this one does not have an automatic document feeder. And in fact, uh, while this one has wireless connection, creates a Wi-Fi access point that you can uh, connect to it with your computer, this one has a Wi-Fi version or a non-Wi-Fi version. This one is the non-Wi-Fi version um, and it costs about 180 bucks. I think this one is around 250 bucks with the Wi-Fi version. So the DoxyGo SE Wi-Fi is 200 on Amazon. I'll leave a couple links in the uh, video description uh, to the Amazon page where you can uh, check out additional information if you like. This is basically what you get in the box, except for the case. The case is an add-on accessory. It's about 25 bucks from the folks at, uh, at Doxy. Now, a couple things I wanted to point out about the DoxyGo SE before we actually look at how it scans. Um, compared to the interface on the DoxyQ, which has a uh, power switch on one end, it's got a scan button, it's got a format button allowing you to choose JPEG or PDF, and it's got a DPI button allowing you to scan in either 300 or 600 DPI. The DoxyGo SE has a single button in its interface. Uh, and it acts as a power button, obviously. And then when you turn it on with a long press, it comes up in, in, I believe, in whatever mode you had it in last time. So I have a little bit of trouble with this because I'm partially colorblind, but it's color coded. If it comes up as green, that means you're in 300 DPI mode. If you press it again, once it's on and it comes, turns to red, that would mean 600 DPI mode. So Notice that it does not give you the functionality to change the format you're scanning it in. It's always going to scan in JPEG from what I can tell. Uh, and then when you're in the Doxy software, you can save documents out as a PDF, um, including an OCR scan searchable PDF, uh, which is kind of cool. So um, whereas this one scans in either PDF or JPEG, depending on what you specify. All right. So much more simplified interface. There's a lot fewer things to go wrong, I would say because it's got only a single button. Um, it does have the SD card slot in the back. It comes with an eight gigabyte card, as does the Doxy Q. Um, very cool. You don't have to connect it via USB to your computer, although it's an option. It comes with a USB cable. Um, if you connect it to your computer with the USB cable, the computer will essentially see the scanner as a SD card reader. So then the software will pull the scans that, that are written to the SD card directly off the card through the cable. Um, you can, on the other hand, if you've got an SD card reader, just pop the card out, put that in your reader, and you're good to go. The software will pick it up right off the card. That's what I do, um, but you're free to do it either way. If you have the Wi-Fi enabled version, you can either create it, uh, have it create its own little access point that you can connect to, or you can join it to your home wireless network, um, and it's actually just another wireless node on your network. Uh, so it does work either way. So having said all that, let's uh, let's take a look and see how it scans. I've got a couple of things we're going to scan. Let's start with uh, this uh, quick start guide. It's as good a thing as any, I suppose, right? It's about maybe 11 inches long and 
five inches wide. Um, but it's super thick. It's actually uh, like a Lexan almost. It's, it's really, um, it's coated and it's probably a little thicker than standard cardstock, I would say. So this would be a good test. Now you do have to, the sensor that picks up your documents is located on the left side of the scanner. So you do have to line your documents up face up uh, on the left side. It'll pull the document about an eighth or a quarter of an inch, giving you a moment to let go of it uh, while it pulls it in and centers it. So that's kind of cool. The, the DoxyQ did not do that. It just sort of took it in however you had it set and you were kind of stuck with whether it was aligned or not um, on that scan. Now, of course, the software gives you the features, as you'll see in a little bit, um, that you can, you can adjust, even fine, fine tune adjust alignment. So not, not a huge deal, but it saves you a step if you can get it aligned perfectly every time. The, also, the software also uh, detects the edges of your document automatically and um, sort of pre-crops the image. So you don't have a bunch of white space hanging off the side that you have to crop, um, especially with uh, oddly sized photos and things like that. So I find that actually be a nice time saver. So let's scan a standard photograph, just a four by six. Let's see what mode we're in. I think we're in 300, no, this is 300 DPI mode. So let's see how quickly it scans a four by six photo in 300 DPI mode. I have to say, having used the DoxyQ for quite a few pages, um, I've had it for, like I said, a little over a month now and done a lot of scanning with it. The manual feed feel for this does feel a lot more solid. It feels more reliably aligned, and I haven't had any issues with it so far um, pulling, di pulling documents in. Now, here's a, it's kind of an older sort of box camera, uh, so the image is pretty crappy. Um, but it is an oddly sized panorama uh, photo. So let's see how long it takes to scan. Let's do this one at 600 DPI with a long, one single quick press on the power. So a little over 12 seconds, I would guess, on that at 600 DPI. So let's scan something with just some text on it. So just some basic text with a little bit of color. We'll scan paper. Normally we would scan at 300 DPI. So let's see how long it takes to scan a full page. About eight seconds. Now that we've scanned a few documents, let's, uh, let's go check out and see how the software works. Right, so now it's ready to import new scans. I have two options now, uh, well, three options if I actually have the wireless version of the DoxyGo SE, which I don't believe that I do. Since I don't have that option, I, it leaves me with two other options. I can take out the SD card uh, that comes with the Doxy, and I can put it in my card reader put that in my computer and the software will automatically recognize that and then I can go ahead and import the scans. And I've got a couple of scans that I did. That's the quick reference guide or quick start guide and there's an old photo. All right. You can see I didn't have to crop anything. Looks nice. Um, you still have all the uh, you know, orientation buttons that you would normally expect. You can double click something and adjust the brightness contrast. Um, you can do really minute uh, rotation adjustments if, if you want to. Um, you can auto adjust it. Uh, if you really need to kind of tweak it, you can move it in very small increments one way or the other. That looks about right to me, zero, zero. All right, and then uh, I'll click okay. You can give it a new name if you don't like the one Doxy assigns. And um, you can also uh, handle your cropping here. The crop, I, I prefer a crop that allows you to sort of uh, pick, pick a, um, you know, an aspect ratio, for example, or you can maintain an aspect ratio if you want, or just draw a box around the thing that you want and be done with it. This has kind of an interesting crop where you actually crop in one direction uh, or crop, crop in the other direction, and then you crop right, left, top, bottom. It's, it's uh, individual controls. Um, so I think that'd take a little getting used to, but uh, I mean, it gets the job done, I suppose. I'm going to say OK here. And right now, um, one thing that's interesting to note, this is different than the DoxyQ behavior that I had, uh, where if I go and look at the memory card that I am now looking 
uh, at that I've imported from, it has only the JPEG directory. So it does scan everything in either 300 or 600 DPI, depending on what you select using the power button. But it scans everything in as a JPEG. And then you w import those documents to the Doxy software, and the files are then essentially moved uh, and taken off of the SD card. So they no longer exist on the SD card. It now exists locally in the software install. So that does save me a step of having to clean off the SD card. Now from here I have the option I could save this as a PDF, for example, and I could save this as a JPEG. Um, now the PDF, you notice you got a couple of other options, black and white and color. Um, if you save the OCR option, it takes a little bit longer to do the save, but what it does is it scans the document for text that it recognizes and it allows you to be able to search those PDFs for specific text strings. So that's pretty handy that it does that. All right, so I've, I've imp imported those. If I try to import again, you'll see I actually get an error because there are no files. It'd be really nice to be able to turn that sound off. But there are no files left on the card because it moved them off. So nothing there to import. Let's try another mode. This is called connected scanning. So the first thing I need to do is I need to make sure that the SD card goes back in to my scanner. This will not work without an SD card. So when I plug the USB cable that it comes with from the scanner to my computer, it'll come up and it essentially is recognizing the scanner as a USB card reader. So now uh, my scanning button uh, is functioning normally. I assume here I can click it once and I can go back from red to green, indicating which um, which mode I'm scanning in from a DPS standpoint. Let me go ahead and scan this photo in again. Scan it in upside down this time. As you can see it dismounts the card when I'm scanning and then it remounts the card, right? And I can go on here without doing any imports and I could scan another document. It'll do this dismount remount routine every time I scan a document. Not a big deal, but I do continually get that disconnect, reconnect USB sound from my Windows operating system, um, which is kind of an interesting behavior. But now I can import again, and it did copy those files to the SD card, and now it's pulling them into the software like it did the original time. You can see they're different. I did scan the quick start guide the same way. So I can readjust that. I actually like this one because I didn't have to crop it at all, so I'm going to delete this one. All right, and so that's how that works. One other thing that I do want to point out, if, if you can see on this scan here, there's this thing called tethered mode. And there's a button on the back of the scanner that I showed you called the, where it says tethered mode. And if I were to press and hold that button while I'm connected with the USB cable, I actually don't have to hold it, I just press and release. Get rid of this Dropbox note. I get this notice here that says tethered mode. Doxy Go SE has been connected in tethered mode, a special use mode for specific applications. Doesn't give me really any more information than that. Um, you can't really use the, the Doxy with the Doxy software in tethered mode as it turns out. If you go look at Doxy help on this, they'll actually tell you right here, since we strongly disagree or discourage this feature for most users, we recommend that you push the button on the back of your scanner and return this to its normal operating state. Even though they, they feature the tethered mode instructions here very prominently on the quick start guide, leading you to believe that this is perhaps something that you might want to do, unless you've got a very specialized third-party application, uh, probably with some API uh, programming uh, designed to take advantage of this, you're not, gonna, you're not gonna be using tethered mode in almost all cases except those extreme unusual circumstances. So I am going to go back to the software. I will press the tethered mode and release, putting me back into regular, what they call connected scanning mode. And now you can see it recognizes my SD card. So if you don't have an SD card reader, um, connecting the USB cable is a really easy way to do this. So that's pretty handy using connected mode. Um, or if you've got the wireless version, uh, you can certainly use it for that. A few quick final thoughts. I think you'll agree the software is pretty straightforward. It's very intuitive to use. Um, not the most full-featured scanning software on the market, but then again, it does have all the basics. It's got you covered. Um, and uh, 
I think for the price that you, you pay for this, at 180 bucks or 200 if you get the Wi-Fi enabled version, um, you, you get a lot of value for the money. And I think if I, for my particular purposes, I would choose the, the Go SE over the Q for me. I don't really need the manual or the automatic document feeder. And I do feel that they have improved the manual feeder on this to the degree that it's actually faster because I, virtually every document I scan is perfectly aligned. I don't have to fix the alignment later in the software. Um, and the single button user interface uh, means there's less to go wrong. I find it highly convenient at, at 1.3 pounds and uh, I'm more likely to use it since it's going to take up less real estate sitting in the corner of my desk or up in a cubby in my desk. It's very easy to keep it handy so that I'll use it more often. So um, I would also say about Doxy tech support, if you do have to use the tech support guys at Doxy, they've been extremely responsive for me uh, when I had to use them for the Doxy Q. They always got back to me on my email uh, queries in 12 hours or less. They seem genuinely interested in solving my problems and they were a pleasure to work with. Um, I don't know that you can really say much more about tech support than that. So kudos to the Doxy tech support folks. Um, so if you're in the market for a highly portable scanner, I, I really think you could do a lot worse than the Doxy Go SE uh, for the money. So if you found my comments helpful, please give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. We do post a lot of uh, nature hiking adventure videos too. Um, and maybe you'll enjoy those kinds of things with some nice music in the background from time to time. And, uh, you know, we hope to see you again. So thanks for joining us, and we will see you next time.